You know, oftentimes tourists gets a bad rap these days. And uh, you know, what I would say is one of the first revolvers that I was ever introduced to was a, was the Taurus Raging Bull. My dad had one, it was a 357, seven shot. What I have here is the 856, and this is a little snubby that is a, a double action only bobbed hammer. And at my house, if I can, can, if I can afford to do it, a lot of times, I will wait to open the mail until my girlfriend comes over and then she gets to do the mail call, so to speak, and see all the presents. Well, uh, she opened this up and she was like, uh, this one's mine. And I'm like, what? You know, she's never opened any firearms and been like, I want that. And she was like, this one. So uh, I guess now I have to stock 38 Special. I've never really seen a problem with the Taurus revolvers. I think a lot of the angst comes from uh, they're semi-autos, and you know what? I don't have any experience with their semi-autos. I guess I could reach out to Taurus and see if we can get some of their semi-autos in, if that's something that you're interested in. I know that they're uh, they're a fairly price point competitive gun. So, yeah. that said, uh, today we're covering the 856 in part because actually, uh, you guys know that I'm a big fan of XS Sights and they're a good friend of the channel. They've been a supporter for a long period of time. They now are making sights for the Taurus series of revolvers, which is fantastic because one of the things that a lot of times keeps me from going to guns like this one are because a lot of times you get it and it's just got like a serrated front blade without a lot of contrast on it. And this one did just has a serrated blade without a lot of contrast on it. And then you got this kind of like rear notch that's fairly crude, but you know, this one is actually pretty crisp as far as real rear notches are concerned. So what I found on that first round is that uh, on initial intuitive presentation on this, these sights hit a little bit low. So I'm gonna change my sight presentation on this one and see how we do this time around. Again, six shots of 38 special. Again, not a caliber that I usually stock, but we stock it today. That one was totally my fault. Yup. I'm saying that it, uh, yeah, definitely. So I was aiming uh, with these sights, I was basically putting uh, the dot in the notch and aiming slightly high. So this time what I'm gonna do, instead of doing that that way is I'm going to put the dot on top of the notch and see how that goes uh, see if that solves the problem and to do that I guess we're going to probably have to move the camera again reason this video is publishing today is XS is running a sale it's holiday and they usually run a sale I think it's like 20% off so think about tritium sites is they can be expensive so it is my advocacy that you buy them once and cry once during one of their sales. And look, you guys know how inflation works. The cost's only gonna go up. So anyway, that's the end of the plug, I suppose. 20% off sale, excess sites. Oh yeah. And that's the thing that I would say about the 856 is oftentimes I stay away from, as you guys can see, the uh, cylinder is empty there. I usually try to stay away from these bobbed hammer guns because I understand the value of the swooped hammer being missing so you don't snag it on anything, but that eliminates the single action function. And sometimes that double action can just be egregious. Well, actually, this is not bad at all. Right, this is, this is actually really nice on the double action. So I was pleasantly surprised by this. And I think perhaps the, uh, the little lady's initial, I, I don't know what it is <laughs> about the, the, uh, the little wheel gun and the female. <laughs> they just, for some reason they seem to gravitate towards them, or at least in my experience they do. And, and I don't understand why that is and don't, 
don't say it's well because it's easier for him to carry a purse. My girlfriend doesn't even own a purse, so I, I don't I don't subscribe to that whatsoever. She's not gonna snag that coming out of a purse because she doesn't even own one. The last couple I could see them and they're like hitting the dirt <laughs> like 10 feet in front of the target. So uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more practice on that. And um, I only fired five. So which way does this gun turn? It turns, it turns to the left. So I got one more try. So we're gonna aim high. No, not a chance, not a chance. You see, I never claimed to be a competent shooter, and if for whatever reason, you got the impression that I was, but well, I'm here to dispel any notion of that here today. So could not hit the uh, steel at 50 yards with the snubby. Let's see if I can point shoot on these targets here. Huh. Okay. Huh. I was aiming for the other one, but that's beside the point. Okay, now we've moved into just screwing around phase. And as far as I could tell, counting that tells me that I only have five rounds of ammunition left. So we have We've used our our ammunition allotment because this is all the 38 special that I could find. Uh, it's good fiocchi stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's the only thing that I could find. So we're gonna put the cylinder on the empty position, and then uh, we're just gonna see how fast I can dump it into the dirt. <laughs> Thank you all for. You know what? No, nope, I take that back. This is what happens when you shoot an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plate a hundred times and then leave it out in the rain for a year and a half. We still didn't get any penetration on this thing. Like they still just kind of went in and got stuck in there. So still viable, really big target that I shoot to make myself look more apt at shooting. and feel better about my lack of ability. We're done. <laughs>